the warrant. First on the agenda. Siri, uh, oh, stop listening. I swear. Uh, are there any changes or additions? Yes, there are. Uh, under liquor control, please add the review of a tobacco license request. And then under uh, old business, uh, we uh, I neglected to put a dollar amount in one of the motions that went before you in December in reference to the phase two construction upstairs. And Tina tells me for accounting purposes, we need to have a dollar amount affixed to that project. So uh, there's a motion pre-written for you. You've approved the project. We need to approve the dollar amount. No, no more than a dollar amount, please. Okay. okay. All right, next, approve the minutes. We approve the minutes of 12 19 22. Do I have a motion regarding them? Motion. motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Don. Any further discussion on these minutes? Um, I just had two things. Um, one was on paragraph two on page four. Um, where it says it was discussed about who will pay for the balance of the grant does not cover the complete cost. I mean, I know that's a question, but I, I don't think it should be a question mark. And then farther down in my concerns, um, I just wanted to, to say um, the amended budget schedule is difficult to manage and would prefer longer regular meetings as opposed to more meetings. Um, because I didn't mean that the select board, regular select board meeting schedule is <laughs> unmanageable, I just meant the amended budget schedule. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have that. Any further discussion about these minutes? Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> the minutes are passed. <clears throat> now the minutes of 227-22. Make a motion to approve it. I have a motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on these minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm abstaining. Okay, is there a hand? Okay, the minutes are passed. Next, liquor control. <clears throat> Do I hear a motion to go into liquor control? So moved. Motion by Judy, is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in liquor control. So we have a <clears throat> tobacco license request. You do, it should be up, uh, in front of you on the table there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 10 Railroad is location. Uh, business name is Big Intelligence Group, BBA Wild Legacy Cannabis. Jason, have you seen this? I have. No issues. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding to the, this license renewal? Is, uh, is this attached to the um, two ten railroad? Is it that separate annex space that was where the cafe was? I I can only assume that. I don't know for sure. I haven't gone out to ask any questions mm -hmm. about it, but the restaurant's still thriving. So I think it's a back room because they're yeah. doing renovations to it right now. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, right there, cigar lounge or whatever. <clears throat> All right, do we hear a motion? Make a motion, we approve it. Motion by Brian, is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this motion? I'm unfamiliar with, we've, I've never had a tobacco one come forward that I'm aware of. Is this just with going to sell tobacco? No, it's cannabis. No, it's cannabis. Yeah. This is oh, part of cannabis. cannabis. Okay. Yeah, we have done the other two. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah. I think they, could, they can only purchase there. Yeah, right? you correct. Can't yeah. You right. Can't smoke there. Right? Yeah, you can't smoke there, but you can buy it there. Okay. Just smoke outside, right? Yeah. Not, but not I'm not public. going there. <laughs> not, not in public. Jason just smiling. So, <laughs> Judy, with a number of meetings ago, we you, you may have been out that night, but I explained to liquor control, or Sarah explained, liquor control years ago interpreted the statute to mean that they have the right to approve the tobacco license requests at their level. At some point, someone did a different read on the statute and they realized they don't have that authority 
and that it should be approved at the local liquor board. So now we're not only doing the local liquor licenses, you're also doing tobacco requests. So you're gonna get cigarette and cigar and pipe tobacco license requests from the stores and everything else. So, so anybody who wants to sell tobacco has to come before us? Correct. Right. Right. I guess- um, It's a changing of, process. Okay. I guess part of my concern is the proximity to, you know, downtown and the schools. Um, I, I thought in the process of um, deciding to um, pass the um, cannabis um, law, we had um, talked in meetings about um, putting some kind of regulations around the um, proximity to schools. Um, so, I mean, it's a concern you could walk there from school pretty easily. Yeah. So yeah. the state law, the state statute does speak to those distances mm -hmm. uh, away from the school buildings. Mm -hmm. The only thing that local municipalities can do is restrict them through your zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. There is no regulatory or ordinance action you can take against mm -hmm. uh, these folks. The state uh, has, has written the law so tight that <laughs> that's, that's why I didn't encourage you folks to, to form a local cannabis control board is because you really have no teeth. It's just a pass through. Um, right. the, the distance from schools is all regulated by the state. It's 500 feet, isn't it? I, that's what I recall. But that's what I recall. I can look that up again. But, and that would be well outside that anyway. Right. And we do have zoning bylaws about retail, the retail areas of town and whatnot. So, I mean, there's bylaws are in place. Cannabis is treated just like any other product that's for sale. It can't be regular, it can't be singled out. Mm -hmm. So, it's a, it's a product being sold like lawnmowers or anything else. So, there's an area in which that can be done. It can't be singled out by, it could be singled out by zoning. No, I mean, you can't, no regulation you create even through zoning. If you regulate it specifically because it's a cannabis shop. Uh -huh. You can't do that. You get no. challenged in court. Right. Yeah. It's only about the, the zones in which it can be. So you can hear commercial and retail zones. That's, you know, that can be there. Right. Someone tried to do it in their residential area. They couldn't do it. Right. But if it's right. in the commercial right. area, retail area, they can yeah. do it. If it's zoned that way. Correct. We were also told like during that whole process that we would as a town have some say around, um, we could potentially have some say around the number of um, dispensaries in town, the concentration in per square mile. Again, that's through, your, that's through that. zoning. That's also That would be through zoning. zoning. Okay. Planning, would so have to, could, planning council would have to start that discussion as far yeah. as bringing it to you as a, yeah. an amendment or a new bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's where it would talk or right. start. Yeah, I mean, it's something to think about. Yeah. Well, this year, too, is the same as liquor. We we okay it, but then they have to okay it. Too. That is correct. The, the state, state has a yeah. second say. Yeah. And the yes. other one's enforcing. Correct. Okay, if the bar is doing something wrong, the police can go in and do the stuff. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if it's really bad, the state's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, is there any other discussion about this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm going to say no. Okay, the motion is passed. Is there any other liquor control tonight? No. Do I hear a motion to come out? Motion to come out. All second. Motion by Brian, second by Judy. All in favor to come out? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are now out of liquor control and back in the regular select board meeting. So next, new business is, actually we'll do the, um, the motion correction or addendum for the construction project. And do that. Do you have the motion? I do, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the construction proposal in the amount of $116,019.96 from Donnie Blake Jr. Incorporated for the second phase of the second floor of the Tegu building and authorize Bob Beeman to sign the acceptance of agreement. Funds will be utilized from the Municipal Building Fund. All right, I have a motion by Don. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion with this motion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> motion is passed. I really thought we said the number. You know, during that meeting, I thought when he made that motion, I thought he said the number. I think we just did say the yeah. number when we were having conversation, but there was never an actual motion where you signed in the, the agreement, and the auditors appreciate that very much. Okay. So I thought it'd be better to say okay. it. Sorry. Okay. 
All right. Next, uh, budget review. How do we want to go at this? Do you have any anything you want to talk about in the scenarios, or do you, Tina, do you want to? So I, last time we met, I made my recommendations. Uh, you folks approved the recommendations, and Tina has applied those now in a corrected version of the budget overview. So uh, to recap the entire process from last fall, we started at 39% in the range of 39% with our initial budget presentation. Over the months that we've been working on this, uh, we've been able to trim in areas and put off some projects, paying for the second phase construction out of the capital uh, building fund such that we aren't putting in the next year's budget, those, those issues, um, which has brought it down to 32.4%, uh, which is where you currently sit. Uh, there was discussion about the proposed positions. There, there are actually two and a half proposed positions in this budget. Uh, we're looking to uh, have our recreation coordinator go from the uh, seasonal uh, full-time or seasonal part-time employee that she is to a full-time position. That's the half half raise. And then you have two other slots. One is the assistant zoning administrator position, and then the uh, request for another law enforcement patrol officer. Jason has given you uh, some numbers to consider. I think you gave them to them in the packet for the weekend. Uh, call volume to the police department. Uh, I'll let Jason present that uh, that information. So I did compile some stats to for pretty close to the end of the year, and as you can see, the increase in calls to service has gone twenty five percent this past year, and I backed it up one more year in two thousand. And that was a 13% increase, so it's continuing to uh, increase in call to service. One of the biggest reasons for two or for this additional spot is to have two patrol officers on duty all the time. Right now, we only have one officer on, uh, depending on the day of the week, from 2 a.m. until 10 a.m. If we get a vacancy or we get somebody hurt, then that 10 a.m. number is we push back to 2 p.m. Like this past year, because of vacancies, we ran one patrol officer on. 2 a.m. until 2 p.m. So with the increase in calls to service, we are going back to back to back calls, and this really creates a lot of paperwork, you know, it leads to burnout, and it's a safety issue as well, because right now we rely on either still police or Lamont County Sheriff's Department to come back to so, up. You know, on a good day with good roads, you're probably talking 15 minutes. Um, just this past weekend, when we had one officer on, we had a uh, still police came up twice. Uh, I didn't compile, I didn't go back any further, but then another example this morning, our one patrol officer was tied up from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. on an investigation all by himself. So all by himself is saying there's nobody to answer a call service that came in other than myself or another administrative, uh, our administrative assistant whose uh, job is to work the road. So, uh, so those are just a couple examples, and there's really lots of examples like that throughout the year. But the increase in stats is really all over the board. Uh, everything from traffic stops to mental health calls. You know, our criminal arrests are up 39%. That's huge. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't see any of these numbers slowing down. And this, there's been a lot of talk about the animal patrol officer and having the PD start taking those calls. We pretty much have started taking those calls since the beginning of December uh, with our current staff, but there's no way that we're going to be able to sustain doing that with everything else. With the limited manpower, especially when we have one on duty. <laughs> that one stat there, the DUI alcohol rests up 72% over the last two years. Unbelievable. <clears throat> the other reason, you get this additional person that means 10 patrol officers. And like I said back when we had our budget meeting in November, I think it was, is we have some retirements coming up here in two years. We got two officers that are going to get eligible, and then in three years, we got another two more. So we have potentially four retirements, not saying they're all going to go, but they're going to be eligible to go. And when we do hire a new police officer, it takes at least a year to get them up and running 
unless we're lucky enough to hire a full-time certified officer. But we had a vacancy from June until December. It took us six months to fill this last position. Uh, luckily, it is a pre-certified officer, but if it wasn't, it would be a full year until that officer was able to work by himself. So that would a year and a half process. And I don't think that's going to change <laughs> over the next two years. I think uh, we're going to continue to fight that battle of finding uh, candidates that are qualified to become police officers. So this is going to give us, you know, if we lose one officer or two officers, we're still going to be able to maintain two on, but it's also going to, you know, we lose three, then we're back to single coverage. So, uh, but I do feel that the tenth officer is, in, it's not, it's something that we need. Uh, we needed it for a while, and uh, our, we just keep getting busier. Yeah. If I could uh, jump out and point out two other figures, Andy. First of all, for the for the audience's sake, we talked percentages of increase in number of calls. In 2021, the police department answered 4,105 calls for service. And in 2022, just ended, that number went up to 5,175 calls. It's 1,070 calls more than the previous year. Uh, certainly a substantial increase. And I was also not overlooked the 58% increase in mental health calls. We all know what COVID has done to our community from youth to adult. Um, their work, Jason's working with the North County Mental Health to get an embedded mental health worker <coughs> on a grant. I mean, there's some very positive things going on, but one person responding to a mental health call at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. is a very dangerous, uh, a David dangerous uh, calling. So mm -hmm. I, I think there is a, Certainly a need here. And the other thing is, we did acquire the hundred thousand dollar grants uh, to help supplement drug enforcement, which we're going to use for our detective lieutenant spot. That grant is he, he works an hour, we bill an hour, so we only get the we only get what we put into it essentially. Uh, we did some figures, Tina and I, and we came up with sixty eight thousand dollars. We felt comfortable putting in this revenue. So right now we have sixty eight thousand dollars of revenue put into this budget to help lower it uh, moving forward. But without that tenant control officer, we may have to take that $68,000 revenue out because I think it's going to draw our, that person, that detective lieutenant, it's going to have to help just hold that home from because uh, we're that busy during the daytime. Mm -hmm. so, but we do have it in there right now as, as revenue. Yeah, the other thing I... I, uh, I was at the PD today, and I've been there a bunch of times, but it really makes me realize I was down in the booking room downstairs, and everything is so tight. It's um, This is an area we've needed we've needed to work on for a long time, and, and even the new investigator, you know, he doesn't even have an office. There's no place for him, is there, Jason? Right and it's like the police really needs the help. And I think this speaks volume as far as what reflects the budget increase, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's more than justified. You know, I know that everything you do is great for the community, and this is a, a very essential service. Not that uh, our other departments are either, you know, Highway 2, EMS 2, fire, but this is, this is an area where it's really, really important too. So one, one thing to point out is there's two police departments, one to the north and one to the south, that are comparative in size and calls of service, and they both run two on all the time. Yes, yeah. and we don't. You really need that. You need that kind of control unit to be able to work that schedule and to fill overtime shifts. And yeah. You know, when it comes to many of the things that we've talked about cutting in this budget, which we all agree is a very, very big number. Uh, this is perhaps what I'm most hesitant in cutting. Um, I think when it comes to government, whether it be federal, state, and local in this case, I think public safety is one of the most important things that we, that we do. Um, the statistics that you've given here, Jason, I mean, they're, they're overwhelming, you know, the, the changes and the demands on our police department. And uh, obviously the police department in my opinion, it's been doing some great things recently and under your leadership has certainly has been doing some great things. The fact that we have on multiple days of the week, one officer on call in the middle of the night is, is troubling, I think. And 
I think if most people in Morrisville knew that, Morristown knew that, I think they would be troubled by it. Um, and now recently, and I know this isn't based upon hard statistics and facts, but many of us read Front Porch Forum and there's, it's troubling that we're hearing about thefts right downtown in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Thefts right outside the door, right here. Um, I, I, I personally would have a really hard time cutting that, the position that you're asking for. And that's a good point. I mean, that, the case you mentioned is pretty recent. It's in daytime car break-ins, and then the car is unlocked, uh, but it's literally happening right in the middle of the day in the parking lot out back here. And our patrol officer, they're going to call the call, so they're busy doing paperwork and not able to be out proactively patrolling. There's no, I mean, one of the best ways of the crime is just seeing a police car drive around. Um, and it's hard for us to do that, especially during the daytime. Yeah, thanks so much for preparing this. This is uh, it's an eye opener. Do we um, do we pay um, neighboring towns when we have to call in their officers? No, no we have a mutual aid agreement, so okay. they come back us up. Um, we will back that yeah. up. Okay. So we have a great working relationship right. with both the sheriff's department and so forth. Same with the fire departments, right? They're all the same. Yeah. Okay, we do we do I'll that mutual aid a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you're probably also responding to um, when there's inclement weather and all that. Twenty-four seven, three sixty-five. Right. Thanks, no, Jason. Oh, I meant, I meant like if there's a storm and you have to like redirect traffic and all that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we put an extra person on for that yeah. storm last mm -hmm. uh, Friday. Or Friday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I appreciate this. I appreciate the information we have about the mental health issues and that you're mm -hmm. you're working on that too. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I think. I think we, it's looking pretty good in this last grant, so we'll know more in a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Go ahead, Laura. You want to step up to the microphone? <laughs> Introduce yourself, please. And speak loudly. Laura Streets. Uh, one thing I'd like to say um, that it is becoming very clear to me is I have a new neighbor and uh, I think we can assist the police by cleaning up some of our zoning uh, laws. I think they're very vague, which I think we have all liked uh, under the assumption that everybody's going to do the right thing. Uh, that is no longer the case. Uh, I think there are a lot of noise calls that are going in, dog calls where the police are being involved. I know that my neighbors called and reported a false trespassing, people were on my property. <laughs> and so I think we can assist by getting, by tightening up some of the zoning uh, things. And again, I have the same neighbor is putting in a gun range. And I can tell you that everybody in the neighborhood mm -hmm. is going to call on noise calls. And uh, because the way our current zoning says, it doesn't say anything, you know. And if you look at target shooting, um, the way the state defines a gun range, target shooting is a gun range. So I just want to think, you know, um, and and also express that people are having a very hard time by presenting a budget with a 32% is going to drive a lot of people over the edge who are already on the edge. Um, so I think I would encourage you all to really think hard. Maybe we need a hiring freeze, um, other than the police. <laughs> uh, but this is really not the time to be spending a lot of money. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Tony, go ahead. Um, Come on up here. So can I just speak, say one thing to that? Um, I always have the question, Laura, um, about how the uh, actual percentage increase in the budget will um, affect an individual um and we we don't ever know that until you know the um the numbers come out in is it, it's august right um so it's so hard to know what that actual like dollar amount means for each person in town um, well, and that's will, what that's what's so tough well i will say that we had a 12 percent i think last year mm -hmm. and other towns called colors off mm -hmm. so ours keeps going and going mm -hmm. and whether 
you know, as a taxpayer. Um, I think somebody commented on the news thing about, well, it's only 1%. Anybody who's paid a mortgage understands how much 1% is. And it doesn't matter how many people you divide it up, it's all cumulative. And if people are hurting. Thank you. Great, Tony. Uh, Tony, Cody, I, I've been on uh, Cody Hill for 35 years. Yesterday, there was probably over a thousand rounds fired right in the back of my house. And I don't know where it's coming from. It's either in the back of the house or it's up in the rig somewhere. And it went on for like an hour. Okay, that's one example. So I agree with Don, the public safety is big. I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. It was just an echo. Um, and then New Year's Eve, same thing, rapid fire all over the house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's going on anyhow? I mean, let's, I don't want to spend any money either, but I mean, that's, something, you know, something's got to be done. You know? yeah. So just keep that in mind. Jason, what, you're the uh, police chief? Yes, sir. Keep that in mind, because well, I'm going to call you. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Bob, we have a question on Zoom mm -hmm. as well. Okay, go ahead with that. Tommy. Tommy who? Tommy Gardner. Oh, Tommy. Oh, Tommy. Is that Tommy Gardner? I don't know. Oh. <clears throat> Tommy, you there? Yeah. Yeah. What is your last name? We think that 32% is an incredible amount in one year to go up. Uh, you know, I agree that we probably need an extra uh, person to patrol, but is there other ways that we can cut this down? Because 32% is a large increase in one year. We said the same thing. Most of those increases are um pay and benefit increases that are already built in there's health care increases there's the cost of salt there's the cost of fuel there are fixed items that we can't change most of it's 55 percent of it is is things that we can't we can't have any control over uh, 55 percent of that increase 55 percent of the budget is is wages and benefits yeah that we have no we can't we can't cut that because that's right. based on the um the What's the question? If, if the so the budget that's been presented does include the two new positions, the assistant zoning administrator and the law enforcement officer. So the, the current budget does reflect those two positions being in there. There's three, correct. Two. Well, and that's a half time, the two and a half, correct. Um, Yes, yeah, so those are part of the 32.4% as it stands tonight. Yeah. And did you do the scenario with with not adding the assistant zoning administrator? Because I didn't see that information here. Yes. It is. I saw it, but it didn't, it didn't. There are a lot of scenarios that we could have provided. So uh, we started with the assistant zoning administrator position. Can you tell us what page you're on? Yeah, it's in the packet. Um, I also just wanted to speak again to the um, the idea about the, the, the percentage of the increase. Just because this budget, uh, and I, I'm not saying it's not um, it's not a huge increase. I'm not saying that, but just because the budget increases 30, 30, 34.2% or 31.7%. 30, oh, this is for the. I know. Oh, okay, 32.7. Okay. The 32.4 is the operating budget. Okay. Um, just because it increases by 32.4% does not mean that the individual taxpayers' tax bill will increase 32.4% because it's based, we, we may have more people paying taxes in town, correct? Correct. Yeah. As far as my grade was. Yeah, so I, I just want to make, I, I know it sounds like a huge amount of money, but we also will be spreading it out among more people. And there was like last year, I think our increase was, was it 12%? 12 right here, 12.7. 12.7. 12 yeah. And we were fretting over that. 
when the grand list came in, I'm not quite sure what the increase was, but it was nowhere near. We had a 1.6% growth on the grand list last year, and it brought the impact of our, our budget that was approved down to 9.9% from 12.7. So the grand list growth does have a, a positive uh, approach, you know, uh, impact right. on the budget itself. This year, uh, when I talked to Terry Sabins, she wouldn't lock in on a, on a specific number, but she said it'll be over 2% this year. So it's, that, that works in our favor to help ease the, the burden on the taxpayers. Yeah. But it's, it's not going to take away all this thing. No. And so, at a, as I've said at a lot of meetings now, our, the town percentage of your property tax bill is around 15%. So 15% of what you pay in your property tax bill is this municipal budget. 85% is the school side. And that's the lion's share of your property taxes. And a lot of people need to be reminded of that, but that's the tax. Let's, let's go. Right. Right. <laughs> Come on up, Tommy. So, Tom. Thank you. I wanted to share also that um, the select board in the past it had asked the former mm -hmm. town administrator to keep the budget really low, which he did. And I think part of that is coming around to kind of bite us right now because we kept the budget at a very low rate for so many years. 2.9% back 2014-2015 up to 3.3% 21 to 22. And it ranged between 2.9 and the highest was 5.2 percent increase. So we've we've kind of like uh, um, I don't know what, I don't have the language right now to say it, but we we've slowed down our budget increase, and at this point we have to be starting to move to increase our budget to make up for the time that we kept the but the taxes so low and the budget so low. And the other is to go back to reiterate that we're not going to know what the increase is going to be until August. It's unfortunate that's the way the uh, um, the budgeting process goes because we have to wait for the state and the grand list to be solidified and those numbers to come in before we know what the tax rate is going to be. So unfortunately, we're asking the taxpayers to vote on something that they don't, none of us have any control or knowledge of at that time. I would like, if we would, Tina, last week I think you told us how much money you already shaved off this. Yeah. Eric and I um, work very, very hard because I've been here for 18 years and I've never seen an increase like this. Um, and we shaved off over half a million dollars from our original proposal. Um, so we have been trying our very best to do, and the, the 32.4 seems like a lot, and it is a lot, but it's, in my opinion, and I believe Eric's as well, it's necessary. I, I hate to say it, but in my opinion, it is very necessary. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, you. The, the thank other you. things that have increased is the cola. The cola this year is higher. We've had years past when it wasn't. What's you know, the cost of living. Yeah, no, what's the percentage? Eight, eight point seven. Yeah, that's it was huge. Like Five point nine. We've had many years when it was negligible, because I remember or that's negative. or negative. In those early years, this <laughs> this right here, the handout, it shows the last ten years what it was every year, like Judy was saying, and. The average of those 10 years is only an 8% increase. Well, I remember those years where it was low, and the COLA was low, the inflation was low, the interest rates were low, everything was low. So it is what you said, but it's also the sign of the times. The inflation right now also bumps this up so high, and the COLA at 8% and everything else, and all the costs of all these things we need, like fuel 
and electricity and health care and all of that stuff. Our fuel has gone up between Huge. last year and this year, uh, estimated 54% for heating fuel. That's um, huge. Um, similar to with diesel fuel. Yeah. Um, there's just nothing we can do about that. Right. We can't, we can't say, oh, we're not paying that. We have to pay <laughs> what we're using. And that's the bottom line. So, you know, I, I do, however, maybe have a different opinion. I, I totally support the police budget and um, in the other budgets as well. The EMS, Bill Mapes sent a really good uh, similar breakdown to the calls that he had this year. He sent it to us in email and that really speaks loud like Jason's does, um, you know, to justify their budget as well. And the highway too, we've already been through that. <laughs> we talked about that last week, Scott, with um, the changes they've done in a positive way to save money and less equipment and you know they've done great I, I do however think that in because things are so so high even if it's only a percent we save i think we should save that it's only administrator i don't think it's a dire need right now to get a second one in there i know we don't have backup for todd right now but he's not going anywhere i mean he's been here for what 12 years he's um no intentions of getting done i know he is in maybe five years or you know he might be staying five years for the next 10 years, you know, we don't know, but um, I'm not quoting him, but, but um, I know this is the year we don't have to have that. In a year where it's so big, we should not spend any more than we have to absolutely spend. Um, that's my opinion. My opinion. You know, and even with the recreation and going from half to full, that, I feel like we're in dire straits. I think that we should only spend what we have to spend. And after hearing Jason and seeing that, I know we've got to spend it on on uh, the police and i know we have to spend it on on rescue and and highway but but not more you know i would encourage you to look at your scenarios in there that we did so yeah. that you will understand how much you will be saving yeah um right now I've we're representing 32.4 percent if you cut out the zoning assistant position it goes to 31.1 percent right that's what i said maybe it's 20 percent but it's still that spending we don't have to do we don't have to do well it. there's two um scenarios ones of like if we just had a half time zoning assistant well a like, half a year instead of higher uh, like january uh, 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 and not higher right i mean are we discussing these very are, is that we're moving yeah right well, discussing these various that's next week. i think so scenarios. yeah this is really the time for that i think um, can i can, yeah go go ahead i am for the high interest rate this song doesn't need that much more help well, we don't, that's yeah, yet to be good. seen. I think, <laughs> I think it is important to, um, to make sure that, um, Todd has an assistant. Um, and I, the town is still growing. Um, and I, and I, I don't, I think it's, um, I don't think it's a good, I think it's a good investment to invest in our current employees and make sure that they have the, um, the help and support that they need. Um, it, I mean, maybe to put it off until, you know, for another half year, maybe, but um, I don't, I, I think Todd works too hard. I think he, and I, um, I also, in terms of the rec budget, um, the rec position, if, if we're talking about, um, I think it's important when we're talking about policing to talk also about prevention. Um, and I think one of the um, most important things for prevention of, um, of crime and juvenile delinquency is to make sure that, um, that kids have a place, safe place to go with, um, with adults who've been trained to work with kids. And I, I, I absolutely think that, um, you know, and has been doing a great job um, with the rec program and she's professionalizing it. And I, I also think that's, that would show a real um, lack of um, faith and support in our um, in our town employees. So I I am um, my only vote to cut would be to maybe postpone um, a zoning assistant. But even that, I don't I don't feel that strongly about. What do you think? I guess. Ryan? What are your right. what's your take on? Well, I think that zoning can go away. <laughs> I believe you, for this year, and and what you ought to do if you can is go and talk to Todd. Yeah, because he I planned on it. Actually. Okay, he well, I already have, and he's planning on at least four more years, and maybe five, and and he said if the economy changes, he may have to stay longer. 
but at least that long. So when it starts getting closer, right now I think he's happy. So he's only 39, where's he going? Right? <laughs> yeah, but he can retire when he's young. So my thoughts are go talk to him because uh, like I said, 40,000, like you said, doesn't seem like much. But the people, the people are looking at what we're doing. And if we can cut something here and cut something there, maybe only 40,000, but 40,000 is more than I've got. So. Bob, I'd just like to, and maybe this was where Eric was going with this conversation, because there's a lot more to it than just the, the added staff. But it's worth noting that we started, when we started this budget conversation, we were up closer to 39% on an increase. And we've, we've cut a number of things. Sand, gravel, we've cut there, we've cut from Sidewalk. sidewalks, we've cut the, um, the building upstairs on the second story, the ambulance, storm drains, et cetera. And I know my list isn't, isn't entire. I know I'm leaving something out there. But I just, wanna, just want to remind the public, since we have some new faces in the audience tonight, that we've already, as Tina said, we've already cut a lot of money. We're getting close to the end of what we can cut because now we're getting close to cutting personnel. And me, for one, I, I'm not interested in doing that. I don't think I don't think any of us are. Um, at the last meeting, Brian, I you you made you made a comment. I, at the time, I wasn't thinking about it, but I've thought about it a lot in the last week, and that was going you know holding off on the zoning administrator. Um, and hiring them maybe halfway through next year, and you know, essentially creating a half-time half-time person. That's what we've been alluding to tonight. I kind of like that idea personally. Um, it does cut forty thousand dollars. Doesn't seem like much, but it is forty thousand, and I think it does let the public know that we're trying to we're trying to cut money where we can. And it's going to be, at this point, a little bit here and a little bit there. And I don't think it's going to be that much more than that. I, for one, uh, would love to see Todd have that extra person in there to help him out. Help him out not just with the work that needs to be done, but help him out with uh, the perception of the public in this town as to what he's up to and what's going on in that office. And I think two people would, uh, would help with that greatly. But having said all that, um, I guess I would be leaning towards a half-time zoning administrator. Are we saying a half-time administrator? Are we saying not hiring them until? Not hiring September. them until January. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so January 2024. Correct. Okay. But I could be swayed. Um, I know there's. I know there's some different things that have been set up here tonight. Like you said, if you want to go talk to Todd. Yeah. yeah. I, I meant to get in hurt there. Todd at all. I think. Did he, if he's losing things, we ought to make it up to him. Mm -hmm. But I think that's making it up to him somehow is cheaper than putting a full-time one in there or a part-time one this year. I'm not yeah. saying forever, mm -hmm. but for yeah. this year, it's, it's a bad time. Yeah, give him an extra ten thousand dollars so he can drive to work instead of his walk. Well, he loves walk and work. <laughs> that's the sad part. So it'll be an extra ten thousand, be good. But it's, he's he loves to walk. Go ahead, Laura. So first of all, I would say talk to Todd. Second of all, I like data. Why why do you think we need a second one? I know that I'm trying to renovate my kitchen. It's a year and a half out. So you know, are people not getting permits? I've not heard of anyone not getting a permit. You know, I know you want to make it easy for people, but I'm sorry, if somebody needs a permit to build a garage, if it takes them a week to get that permit, that's not worth a $40,000 plus plus salary because they've got to wait a week. So I think we need to be realistic about <coughs> where we need. We have, uh, we have two dog catchers now. We have a listers assistant. Does everybody get an assistant plus plus plus? I think we have to be realistic about what the jobs are, what the requirements are, um, and is there a need? So I'd love to hear data, who's waited on a permit, and again, the national stats show housing is dropping. You know, people don't have money to do all the renovations they had before. So this was a fluke, this whole pandemic. I know businesses that are now hurting. 
because they balance budgets based on the business from pandemic. And that's not happening. It's changed. So I want to be expressed to you guys, we need to be very careful going forward with this budget that we're not basing it on pandemic needs. Thanks. Um, can I ask a question about Todd's role um, and the, the zoning office's role? Um, my impression is that they don't just, that Todd doesn't just do zoning. He's um, involved with the implement, implementation of the, the town plan and um, helping us um, form agendas around that. Um, so really like, um, I mean, that's, that's the type of work that requires um, you know, more time and more focus. So if he's constantly getting um, called away to do um, more administrative zoning requests, that seems like that would pull him in another direction. Um, and, and again, I think, um, and he also is obviously um, heading up the, the um, planning council, um, which is a huge job. Um, another person could maybe, you know, be the person who takes the minutes, so he's not, you know, that, that he's not having to be the person who takes the minutes. There's been a lot of pressure from the town. Around. May I make a comment? No. No. <laughs> Please wait till Jess is done speaking. Um, there's been a lot of pressure on the town, um, you know, to, to make more obvious um, what we do and how we do things, and I think, I think this would go a long way, um, having a, an assistant. He also is the health officer. Yeah. Yes. So, right. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember if he has any other hats, but I know. Right. Okay, ma'am, would you introduce yourself and you can have the floor? Uh, it's Marianne Wilson. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Hi there. And I have a comment about the zoning position. Um, having been on the development review board, I see how busy Todd is. And I'm wondering about the um, the reappraisal. I think that reappraisal is going to end soon. And I wonder if maybe his, uh, if, if the uh, assistant to the listers could then become the assistant to the zoning. Yeah, good idea, <laughs> if, if we create a new position, <clears throat> it has to be supported by a job description. It has to be open up for hiring. If, in fact, the listing coordinator wanted to apply for it, certainly welcome to do so. But it's not an automatic transition. We can't just move people like that. Right. We'll get ourselves in hot water. Right. And, and so, a job like that, it takes a lot of training. And it's you a lot of difference go between, from, yeah, listing coordinator right. versus assistant zoning yeah. administrator. And if I address Brian's comment, I've talked to Todd, too, many times. And Todd has assured me the same thing. I'm happy. I love what I do. I, you know, I, I don't mind it at all. It's okay. You can wait a year. I have to look at this and I presented this to you folks because I look out for the best benefit of the town and my concern in this building of all the employees that we have he is the single point of failure that will shut down he will stop his loss in any way or manner would put us at a in a terrible position we have no backup for him none no one qualified or even close to qualified to step into his shoes to perform the simplest of tasks. Uh, that, that is why I brought it to you this year. If, if the board chooses to cut that position from the budget, I understand. I understand it's a, it's a tough year. But I would ask you if you do that, that you need to bear in mind that Todd is a, a one-person show in the zoning office. And if, if anything should occur where he is no longer available, we have a huge uphill battle, and that is not a position you can just easily hire out. It, it is a specific, very specialized uh, occupation. So well, that, that's why I brought it to you in the budget, was because there is no backup. Todd, last year, he, he staffs Planning Council. He staffs DRB. He writes all the decisions. He does all the, the administrative work for Planning Council. Uh, he is incredibly busy. To the point that last year, at the end of June, beginning of the fiscal year, he lost over 200 hours of earned time off. He's not using his time off, in my opinion. He will tell you he's just fine. But in my opinion, he's not using his time off to the best benefit. I want the folks fresh. I want them to take a refresher, to take a breather. And when I saw him lose 200 hours in one year, 
uh, it was eye-opening that he is that busy. But he, again, it's a mixture. He loves his job. But are we being fair and taking advantage of the person who loves his job so much that he'll, he'll work and lose time and not worry about it? Well, the other thing that we have going for us is the town plan's done, at least for a few years. He's put hundreds and hundreds of hours into that. Wow. So I would think we would have a lot more time of his to put into, you know, not putting into the town plan. Well, the, the, the writing of it's done, but the, uh, the whole... It's a 10-year town plan. No, so yeah, but not, the implementation not, of it is right. not It's not done yet. Right, but doing those, uh, what was it, 34 different editions? Oh, yeah. Three yeah. years of time. There's that one, was hundreds of hours. One, there's one section that needs to be finalized. <laughs> so we're not voting on this tonight, anyways. It's just discussion. We're not voting anyway. Not voting on anything tonight. The intent tonight is to when you when you leave here, is that we have created perhaps the final changes to the budget, and we can at this point now take a firm number to the, the taxpayers, and as Tom has, has said, and Barry has said educate bring bring some reality and factual basis factual stuff to support that large increase and help folks to understand where it's coming from it wasn't a random number we chose it certainly isn't the number anybody else chose but i'm going to ask how you educate people it's hard to you as a board say anything other than that meeting but you're going to have to educate Always out there before town meeting day. How are you going to do that? Yeah. One one way we're going to do it. One way we're going to do it. I actually reached out to Tommy Gardner and talked to him today. And Eric and I are going to meet with him and um, give him the data, all of the <laughs> different areas of the different uh, departments, and why the increases exactly why each area is higher. Um, the wages and benefits increase and everything right down to salt salt prices and everything we're planning on meeting this week we just got to figure that out that'll be one avenue one one conduit to get it to the people and this other avenue? we're gonna have to have, we're gonna have to have for one a public meeting we always right before town meeting there's always an informational meeting about what's going to be discussed and that's going to be a big one this year you know, in years past, we haven't even had them. You know, like Brian said, there was many years where we asked people if there's any question, and because it was only 2% or 3%, no one had any questions. But there will be questions this year. In fact, I'm, I'm the one that's saying, you know, this is the year we shouldn't do the, the zoning administrator, the, the, the assistant. I just don't think we should. It's not responsible. That's my opinion. Obviously not the opinion of the board. And we'll find out because the taxpayers will be voting on the budget. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if it fails, you know. And we don't have that much we can cut. If 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 it comes back and it fails, we it may mean we cut essential services, you know. So, but that's going to be in the taxpayers' hands, not in all of ours. We can say our opinions, but when it comes right down to it, it's going to be voted. So well, my so thoughts are real quick. Like again, go talk to Todd yourselves yeah. and see what he says to you, how he feels, and. The thing is, we can sit here and figure what we should do for Todd, what we should do, but this is a bad year. So my, that's my thoughts. The other question I have, wasn't Tommy on there and never got on? No, it's a that was a different Tommy. No. Okay. And they did speak it was a woman. Oh, okay. I think Tommy watches the... He watches on he YouTube. He watches it, yeah. if it's not, not okay. real just, time. And, but I'm going to talk to him tomorrow. Out, so I was going to call him tonight yeah. if I have time. Yeah. We're going to set something up. Go ahead, I, Barry. A similar thing here. Does the high school have a AV department where they could produce a YouTube video that could be released to everybody in the town where they could, before the town meeting, see a presentation about how much the budget increase is, what it consists of, and why it's what it is, so that you don't have a, a big you know, explosion at the town meeting? Right. If, if the people won't come to you, and obviously we're a select few here, um, you got to go to them. And that's right. one way of doing that. Right. Well, it's certainly happening right now as we speak. You know, there's a YouTube video of this meeting. We've talked about it a lot. We've talked about it for the last five meetings. But I see what you mean. People can go back to all the meetings if they're not here. And they can say, oh, this is why that's high. This is why that's high. You're right. It would be, be great if we had a fact sheet or a quick reference 
to, this is why highway is higher, this is why police is higher. All the stats are about that. That's what I would like to see happen. And that's what we're going to try to put together for Tommy Gardner, you know. Um, but it's happening right now. Right. There's folks on YouTube watching this. I know because I get calls and stuff after every one. Right. So it's happening. People are asking me already about it. And there will be lots more questions. But right now it's live, too. Yeah. yeah. There's another question on Zoom by Carly. Go ahead. Hi. It's Kathy Chafee. Hi, um, Kathy. Hi. Can you ask, I can't hear the people in in the audience when they're speaking. Can right. they come up to the microphone, please? Thanks, Kathy. I, I will remind them all. If you're going to, if you have something to say and you're here, please come to the microphone, introduce yourself and speak clearly. Thanks, Kathy. I guess so, I would just add to what Barry said, you know, what Barry's saying and what you're saying too, Bob, is to make it easy. Make it easy for to educate the public. If we make it difficult for them, if they have to go back through two months of meetings, you've been to most of the meetings. We've obviously been to most of the meetings, but but there's uh, hundreds and hundreds of people out there that are going to be voting on this that haven't been there, and they're not going to go back and look at those meetings. But you know, the idea that you have with Eric to go and talk to Tommy, I think is a great great idea. We talked about that at the end of the last meeting, and. Boy, if there was some way to, to do what you're suggesting, Barry, I think that would be a great idea. Um, so, yeah, we, we need to make it easy. We need to educate them, and we need to put it right in front of their face and, and make, make it a one-click one stop, I guess, is the, is the way to say it. I just want to be clear. Um, I don't want to put a budget forward that I think is going to fail. The last thing I want to do is see a budget fail or to, to, see, this, to see this go down. Um, I'm very much hoping that it's going to go through. I'm very much hoping that the taxpayers are going to look at this, the voters are going to look at this, and they're going to say, hey, this is, this is what we, we, we have to do. It's a tough year. Um, prices of everything have gone up this year. There's no doubt about it. We're all feeling it, every single one of us. Um, I'm not collecting Social Security yet. But I have a number of friends that, that are, and their Social Security has gone up, what, 8.7, 8.9% this year. That's an incredible increase. It's probably one of the, I don't know, I'll th throw out there, it's probably one of the bigger ones in a long time. And uh, that's reflective of the world that we're living in right now. Um, so that's all I got. I'm in favor of supporting a half-time uh, starting position in January in the zoning office and continue to support the rec person full, full time. And I, um, I, I fully, and, and as a person that sits on the select board, I support this budget. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a tough budget. I support it fully. Yeah. Okay. You have two folks on Zoom. Uh, Napoleon Dynamite <laughs> for the question. <laughs> I've used it that <laughs> And Kathy that uh, Chow. <laughs> That's amazing. Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon? Does somebody want to speak? Are they muted? They, they can unmute themselves. <laughs> I was having some trouble. Uh, this is uh, Chris Audi. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Chris. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I, I just respond to the remark that I just heard about how Social Security was uh, increased 8%. I want to caution you, you know, carrying that forward because very few people are going to have a raise that reflects that. In fact, um, I consider I have a pretty good job. Uh, I'll be lucky to have anywhere maybe 25% of that. Um, you know, every little bit counts. It doesn't seem like there's, you know, some of the board members um, aren't really interested in saving what they can. Um, I would hope that you maybe reconsider that because people are struggling, right? Um, all the up pressure uh, that you're seeing in this budget, they're experiencing on their own. And they also have to, uh, you know, pay that in their property taxes. Thank you, Chris. Is there another question? Kathy, Kathy. Kathy, you want to speak? Um, I will um I will say the same. I, I agree with Chris. Um 
So what I'm hearing around town is, and what I'm reading is water and light wants to increase our rates by 11%. Um, reading that to school, I think is like somewhere in 13%. I thought it was eight and a half, but eight something. Okay, well, so uh, the last I heard was about 13. So, and I, I'm not quite sure what yours are. I haven't paid attention in the last five weeks, but I'm assuming it's around 30%. So if you add all of those together, what that what's that 53% increase? Um, I just don't know how anybody's going to do this. Um, you know, uh, not everybody gets big raises. I, I got a 2% raise this year. That, that's peanuts. I don't even cover the cost of up on <clears throat> eggs. Um, so I just... I just hope that everybody just pays attention and I'm really petrified that um, we have a lot of voters. If people that rent apartments come and vote yes for this budget, it's only going to reflect to them on a little percentage because everybody in that apartment or that building is going to have an increase in rent. But the single home prop, the single um the property owners, single home property owners are going to take the brunt of this. And I just see our village just going away all into apartments because it's just going to be, it's not, it's not li liable. It's just, we can't do it. And it, I know it's not just you, but if you take all those things together, we're in a, we're going to be hurt and big time. But so just, Try to do the best you can, and I guess the people that vote are gonna make up our minds. But I know I can't do that increase of three of them. I I know I can't. Kathy, I'm not a mathematician, and maybe Tina can help out. But um, I don't think the percentages work the way that you're thinking they are. But I don't have the knowledge to explain it to you how they do work. No, but we're also doing this on top of a reappraisal year. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you have to think of that too. We're all going to be reappraised. We haven't been appraised in, I think, what, 15 years? So that's not going to be an extra $200 on our taxes. Well, we, we don't know. Even with the reappraisal, there's no, there's no set amount that it's going to increase. It may not increase if, if you're value goes up that doesn't mean your taxes go up it means the tax rate probably comes down so it doesn't mean more taxes most likely there will be an increase but it doesn't mean they're going to go up two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars or whatever that's all yet to be seen but what judy's saying about the um the school side as i said before the school side of your property taxes is somewhere around 80 to 85 percent well, that means if the school has an 8% increase, then that will be 8% higher of that 85%. And it's the same with the town. If the town budget will be 30% higher of the 15% it is of that amount of your property taxes. So there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of figuring to do it. I, I actually am pretty good at that. I could figure it out, but, but we don't have all the, all the numbers yet. My son's a real mathematician. He could figure it out exactly, but we still don't know. But it's not going to mean a 50% increase. It's not going to mean a 30% increase. It may mean a 12 or 15% increase, possibly. Um, that's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing 10 or 12, but, you know, we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing we can do is get all the information out that we know, the, thing, the, the fixed budget items that we can't change. That you know, and anything extra, we're going to try to not do. That's that's what I think. And and if if the budget doesn't pass, then like I said, we're going to have to go back and figure it out. But um, that's for the taxpayers to decide. And the, our job is to get that information out to the taxpayers, so they can have something they can really understand to vote on. Um, just one other qu quick question. I hope it's quick for you. And. And I'm probably could be way off on this and it could have been taken care of and I don't know, but is there a different process for people asking for money this year? Um, you know, the 500,000, 5,000. No, it's um, the same. Are we verifying that? Appropriations are the same, same exact way, Kathy. 
But are, is there, are we verifying that everything's on the up and up for all of the people that are on that list? Yeah, we do that every year. Okay. Kathy, hi, Kathy. It's Eric Dodge speaking. Uh, Kathy, what we do with the appropriations this year is the same we've been doing for a number, number of years. We require them to send not only a letter requesting to remain on the list, but they also have to send us a copy of their financials. So okay. there, there is, I'm not going to say we send it off to an auditor, but there are some checks and balances required. Uh, we've had some of them come here and speak to the select board to explain what they do with the money and how it uh, helps to pr deliver their programs. But yeah, we don't, we, we do have some checks and balances built in. We also encourage them to come to town meeting uh, if there's any questions for them. And because of that, we've actually had uh, increases voted on from the floor because uh, we've had people there, they've answered questions and goes, okay, I want to raise that appropriation $2,000, you know. I think we have two new, two new groups uh, applying, two new nonprofits applying this year. Uh, I know Laura's got her hand up over there. Right. You know, she runs the uh, farmer's market or is president of the association, however you? Oh, the manager. Manager of it. Uh, they are looking to get onto the list. They're going through that appropriation process where they have to go, they have to get uh, 200 and, I forgot the number, 218 signatures, somewhere yeah. in that ballpark yeah. uh, of voter, registered voters to sign their petition to get onto an article. If the article passes at town meeting this year, <laughs> following years with their letter of in, intent and of the financials, uh, delivered to us, they go on to the list with all others. Mm -hmm. And the other one is Salvation Farms. I know that they're they're doing a signature drive now. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Oh. Thank you. Laura, come on up. Laura Street. I know this has been a bone of contention. I did some uh, extensive research into the process, and I think it's important for everyone to know that currently this select board is obligated to follow the state statute on appropriations, which uh, part of it is that once you're on, you can remain on with a check and ballot system. There's no limited uh, amount. How, the only way that we can rain, um, bring in different uh, criteria is becoming is by becoming a charter of governance, which 80 towns and all of Vermont have done. Stowe did it largely to um, get more control over their appropriations. That's a long process. I would love to see us start that. It's a long way out. Uh, the only other so where we are right now is that you either have to vote on the entire appropriations. Um, yes or no. And the other option, thank, to, thank you to Sarah, is that we can, the select board can decide to line item the appropriations on the ballot. Um, as uh, Bob keeps saying, let's put it in the hands of the taxpayers. In this case, everyone could uh, vote on the appropriations that they want. Because right now what happens is, and I will say I'm trying to collect, I as the um, farmer's market, you, you have to get a certain number of signatures based on the population. So someone who got uh, an appropriation 10 years ago had to get maybe 60 votes. I now have to get 220. Um, so it, it, and it's certainly like we, I don't have a big fundraising team. So it's, as it's gotten, bigger and bigger, it, the new not-for-profits are now at a disadvantage more so. So I would like to suggest to the select board and encourage you to line item it on the budget. Um, it puts a little more onus on the uh, not-for-profit to speak up so that everybody knows who they are. Um, and then it gives it to the taxpayers that we can decide what services we feel are necessary for the town. Um, because once somebody gets money, there nobody's ever going to say, "Oh no, no, I don't need it. That's okay." <laughs> and um, so I think this puts it on, and the town is changing. And yes, I am collecting. So if anybody wants to sign for the phone, okay. <laughs> thank you. Partly, we do line item our appropriation. What no. do you mean? What do you? No. Not on the ballot. Oh, no, on the ballot. Not okay. on the ballot. You vote. It's all or nothing. Yeah. But I do know that it's been 200 signatures for quite a long time yeah. for
for oh, quite a long time. Yes. Well, yeah. well, well, at least 10 years. Yeah. 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 Come on up. Well, 5,000 people for 50 years. Speaking of, oh, yeah. Introduce Fred. Yeah, um, my name's Tom Cludia. Uh, I'm worried about the town meeting. 2016, we had 148 that voted. That I wanted to be voted. Uh, 2017, we had 242 people there. 2018, 163. This is before COVID, of course. 2019, 158. 2020, 168. 2021, 157. 2022, which was uh, the uh, ATV thing, was uh, 213. And then the general election, uh, there was 61% uh, voted, but those were mail out ballots. What I'm afraid of is that you're going to have 200 people deciding if your budget passes. That happens. Almost every year. Right. For many, many years. Well, there's one way to change that. Not this year. But you, as a board, can put on, uh, on the ballot for the town meeting this year that the budget is put on the ballot for 2024. You can do that. And have the people, 200 people, whoever there, vote for the next year that the, the budget would be on the well, then they wouldn't be a town meeting. There wouldn't be a town meeting. There wouldn't be a reason to have a town meeting because all those people come to, to vote on those things. It's maybe time that has come yeah. that we don't have. I, that's tradition, and I love town meetings and all that. Maybe the town time has come where we can't let 200 people decide whether the budget passes or not. If that's something for you. Yeah, we can have that discussion with the Sarah. We're going to have to have it before the town meeting because it's going to have to be on the right. agenda. Yeah, it won't happen this year anyway. Uh, I've, I've always been astonished that even when I first got on in 2008, there was 196 people, I think, that voted millions of dollars for the town. And I remember, I don't know if it was Brian or somebody there, it was like, that's the way it works. The, the town business is decided by the people that show up to town meeting. And I was well, like, about them showing up, they, they're there to wow. ask questions. And listen and hear. Come on, Tony. Not just look at a piece of paper. Yeah. Okay, we got somebody. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Tony, Cody, I just wondered if you guys got a plan. Let's just say it doesn't pass. And it's going to, you're going to have to shave another 8%. If you guys got some kind of vision on what, what you're going to cut. Not yet. Okay. Just. Not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm very worried about it, though. Yeah, I, I, I would be worried about it if I were you. I'd, I'd like to keep us thinking positively instead well, of more negatively. I think, that new price, I think the new appraisal is going to scare a lot of people, and a lot of people don't understand the figures. Yes. Right. And we're not, and unfortunately, we're not going to, we're not going to have that data. I mean, I'm scared. But yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, we could. I mean, in terms of educating the public, we could put a. a She's been trying to get on for a while. Who is? Uh, Kathy Chaffee's back on Zoom. Oh well, hold on. Let's. Are, yeah. are you done? Yeah, he was done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kathy, you have another question. Um. Uh, well, it's more of a statement. Um, Bob, I disagree with you about. Um, that's the way it is at town meeting. Um. And I do blame ourselves, the taxpayers, that it's still that way because um, Tom, um, I'm more than willing to have somebody work with me to get the signatures to get that on so everything is voted by um, paper um, and the town meeting would only be informational. So if anybody's listening here tonight and wanna work with me, I'll definitely work with you to get that changed. That's, it's not just up to the select board, it's up to us towns, town voters to get a petition going and to get that changed. But I cannot do that by myself. And I am more than willing to take on 60% of that if somebody comes and helps me. Because everybody cannot get to town meeting. Well, everybody cannot get there. Every, everybody has to work. And some people don't get enough time off to be able to go. Some people don't even get sick time 
so they have to work and we're and they're expected to go vote on that and take a time with no pay it's just not our future anymore and i know it's it's you know history goes back hundreds of years but things change and i don't know how many times i've heard that from select board members and other buddy else that things change and this really needs to change and i'm willing to work with anybody reach out to me i live at 70 copley avenue um, I think most people would know where to find me. If you don't, Bob knows where I work, and he'll tell you. Well, Kathy, you say you disagree with me. I'm not saying that it's got to stay that way forever. I'm just telling you the way it's been for the last 15 years and my amazement that it is that way. I do, however, know that there are a lot of state statutes and a lot of rules about it, and we need to confer with Sarah that has all the information and knowledge about it I don't even know that it can be changed. Um, I remember having this conversation with her many different times, and it's not just as simple as that. We may even have to do a charter change. I'm not sure what it is. We don't have but, a charter. Right, but if we had, it may involve something with the town. I remember discussing this with her, and it's not just as simple as, oh, we're going to decide to do it that way. I wish Sarah was here. I don't know if she's even listening tonight. But right. Great to have some expert um, advice. Okay. I have been to the town and I was told by Sarah and, uh, you know, I'm hitting my 60s, so I could be wrong, but I was told it could be done by petition by the town, town voters. I was told that too. We can research it. And I'm getting the information from Sarah also, that if we wanted to do that, we could put it on the ballot this year. For, for the next town year. For next year. Now, if you as the select board can do that. If you're not willing to put it on the ballot, then that uh, Kathy and, and I and some other people get the petition. If that's what we have to do, then it sounds like that's what we're going to do. But it'd be a lot easier if you folks, the people that we elected, did this for us. But if you want and let it to stop 200 people from deciding what's happened to this town. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not against it. I never said I was against it. I, I'm telling you, I was amazed that it's been that way. I couldn't believe it when I got on the board. I'm like, seriously? 200 people have been deciding $6 million? That's just the way it's been. I'm not saying that's what I want it to be. Well, why haven't you changed it? Because we haven't had a 32% increase. Well, we do not. Because we've had many people that don't say anything. We've had town meetings done by quarter after nine. And we've had less and less people show up because there hasn't been big issues in town. Now there is, so maybe now there's there's a reason to. But it hasn't been this way for 15 years that I know of. Has it ever been that way? There was talk years ago, Steve Leach was one of them, that said we ought to go to a ballot. Of course, when you do, town meeting goes away, but right. he's talked about it. But my opinion is I want to make sure it's done right. I mean, I don't know, is we have the right to sit here and put it on the ballot without being a petition for it. Well, uh, Sarah said you did. Okay. We didn't know. That's what. Why can't you have a town meeting at the gym up there and still and, and vote right there and vote until seven o'clock over here? Well, there wouldn't be voting on the floor, so there'd be no reason to be there, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and and again, people are going to have to get their ballot in and come in and do it or mail it in, maybe. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Any I don't get to dress up once a year. <laughs> <laughs> so just to be clear, Tony, do away with. Tell me, nobody go. And then, and then you'll have everybody bitch because you did away with. I mean, the data that uh, the data that Tom just gave us, you could interpret that as meaning town meeting has already gone away. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of people don't want to hear that. I always love going to town meeting. Mm -hmm. But with less than 5% of the voters showing up. That's crazy. If you take a town of a couple hundred people, you know, they enjoy it. They have meatloaf dinner and they have all kinds of things. Okay. They enjoy it. Which is how this town was once. When <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I think that's well, other places also have it's different. Kind of yeah. Unfortunately. We got 6,000 people here now. There's only 200 people are going to show up. On a different note, Bob, maybe this is a question for Eric or Tina, but if I'm doing the math right, if 
the town budget represents 15% of the overall budget or the overall taxpayer burden? Yes. I don't know that. But if it, if it does. It's something like that. I'm using nice numbers I can do in my head pretty quick. <laughs> and if the town budget were to increase 30%, 30% of 15% would be 4.5%. That's right. So, the, five, yeah. so given those two ifs and leaving everything else the same, and I know everything's a moving target, it would represent a 4 I, I just saying that because, I mean, already we've heard it tonight, people are thinking that their taxes are going to go up 30%. 30%. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Given yeah. what we're talking about, that's great. It I'm could be four and a half percent, and that doesn't even include the grand list increasing the way we're talking, yeah. which is going to bring that down. Mm -hmm. that, so I just wanted to say that. I just wanted to be on the record it, about that. That the numbers aren't—they're scary. Of course, they're scary. They're—they're they're crazy, but they're not as crazy as it might at first seem. Right. I guess instead of me saying being pessimistic, being, start being optimistic. Let's stop being alarmist because right. we really don't know what these numbers are yeah. in reality. Right. But we do have a sense that they're it's going to come more, up. only around 4 or 5% increase to right. the individual. Or I less. Or less. Yeah. And I say this because, you know, I've had the conversation with Sarah before, and I, I remember it was 85 and 15, or 86 and 14, or something like that. It's between 80 and 85, and the rest is the town. So I had thought five, six percent, maybe seven, but yeah, that's that's a lot more accurate. But it certainly is scary when you see, oh, our budget is thirty one percent more higher this year. Well the school is double scary, so the school is. Yeah. And the school budget is something we can't even touch. We can't get into at all. So Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking about everything else tonight. It's not our purview. Right. We're still talking about. Bob, if I can put in a couple of cents here, yeah. <clears throat> because the, the percentages become confusing. I I, I want to bring the positive note here to the meeting, in that we've just filled our only vacancy at the police department. We have a fully staffed police department for the first time in I don't know how many years. We have one vacancy at the highway department, and all other critical positions in town are filled. I am, I am telling you that twice a year I go to a conference with other town managers and administrators, and that is not the story around the rest of this state. There are critical positions that they can't hire into, finance director positions that don't, they don't have anybody sitting there. So there, there is much to be grateful for here in our community. The services we provide, we are trying to maintain those services with this budget. That, that is the focus here, is to continue to provide the service to the community that they have come to expect and, and appreciate. So we'd all like the budgets to be lower, but the reality of our community and the size of it and for what we offer here with our own police, fire, and rescue squads, we, we've got a lot of things in our community that others do not and others wish they had. But it does come with a price tag. Thank you. Any other comments about this? We don't need to decide anything tonight anyway. Right. Do you have an idea of what you would like me to include so that when you talk to Tommy and he gets the word out, it's accurate? Right. Well, I don't know because we, have, we don't seem to agree on what we're going to well, decide. Okay. Well, what can we go person by person and say what we would want to do? Sure. We would have a sense of Sure. Yeah. What are we talking about? What what part of the budget are we talking about? I think we're talking the personnel part of it. Okay. Well, those are the scenarios we presented. Right. But I don't know if you want to talk about a different part of it or not. I just need some type of direction because we can't obviously give information to Tommy that mm -hmm. is inaccurate. I think what you talked about, the increases of the fuel and electricity, the... the um, what would you call them? Standard, cost of living increases and all Standard that. costs that are affecting us that we have no control over. And then we have, we added some people to our employee and the, the benefit, um, you wouldn't be putting the benefits in, like not their benefits, but the benefit to the community. Mm -hmm. you, that wouldn't be your purview. What no. do you mean? That you, you're just wanting to, what numbers you want. 
to right. include. Right, well, I guess I'm more interested in if you're going to make any cuts to what Eric and I have proposed, what do you want to cut? I don't have any proposed cuts that I would want to see. Okay. But you don't. I, I, I'd be interested in maybe the position for Todd to wait until January. Okay. So I would, I would certainly, as I said before, leave the full time, the addition of the police officer. Leave the rec as proposed. And um, as Judy just said, and as Brian had said at the last meeting, do the zoning half assistant year. for a half year. This is just a straw poll right now. Right? Yep. And we're not taking straw poll. Yeah. The, the problem with this straw poll, though, if it's going to be about the paper, yeah, yeah I, I don't even think I want to say it because I know how I feel. Well, we have to have, don't we have to tell Tina something? Or no, I mean, well, we have to have a majority of us. Well, next week's when we decide what we're right. going to do. And we're not having a meeting next week. Well, the meeting week. next week, well, the next we moved up here. So we can do it at your, your next regular select board meeting as an agenda item to vote on the budget. I thought the final is, is tonight. We moved it up. We moved it up. Yep, we moved it up so you can not have a Monday night meeting next week. And I can bring it back to the agenda after the discussion tonight for our next regular meeting in two weeks. I mean, I can say that I, um, I agree with um, both Don and Judy. Um, I'd like to see the rep position um, go in the um, police officer position go in and um, start the um, town administrator assistant um, at a half year. So that's, yeah. And, and I feel, I like our budget. I know, I don't like our budget, but I know it's necessary. I support the police position 100%. Um, I support the human resources position we've added this year. I do not want, I would rather not do full-time rec this year because we, this is a dire straits situation, I feel like. It's, it's, it's cost us a lot of money. And I would also like to not hire an assistant uh, zoning administrator this year. I, I really don't think we need it. I think Laura's correct and everything's slowing down. Um, if, if we had to bring our heads together and write up a building permit for a deck, if we needed to, if Todd couldn't get to it, I think it wouldn't be a, a big problem. I don't think we've got, and Todd, I know Todd has said this, that, one of the last meetings he was at is he doesn't have people knocking down his door for zoning permits right now um, and as i said the um i know he's still got some work to do ongoing with the town plan but a big part of that is not there now as he spent hundreds of hours on that town plan and that is probably some of those hours he's lost because he spent so much time with that over the last three years well he doesn't have to focus on that right now and I think that we can wait a year on doing this zoning, assistant zoning administrator, because he's not getting done any four years, five years. I do agree we should have somebody in there for when he is ready to retire. We can train somebody up and have him sort of be a smooth transition. Uh, but we, this is not a year to be adding anything we don't absolutely need. That's my opinion. So. So I feel the same. I'm 100% behind the police officer. I'm all right with the rec part, that part too. Uh, I think that would be one we may have to look at if they fail. Um, zoning, because of what I talked to Todd, the way he feels, and with what he told me that things are slowing down, percentages are slowing down, there's not as much building and stuff. He's, I think that we could get by without him for a year. I have a question. Um, Let it come up. Yeah. Yeah. No more speaking from the gallery. Uh, a question regarding um, newly created positions. Um, the Lester's assistant, someone mentioned that now that the appraisals are over, uh, Marianne did actually moving that person over. What happens if, in this case, the Lester's <coughs> assistant that is determined that we no longer need her? I've never even seen her here. Um, how is that handled is my question. If it becomes obvious that you, a position is not necessarily needed. Right. We haven't had that situation. She, well, she, if we're talking about the 911 coordinator position, there, there is no Lister's assistant 
position. So I, don't, I just want to make sure we're talking about the same position. So we have a, a 911 coordinator who is Abby Griggs, who does the 911 coordination for road namings. She clears all the process there. She does a lot during the reappraisal. She's done a, she does a lot working with Terry, our assessor, uh, when there's not an appraisal going on. Um, she has plenty of work to do, but it's not just because we have a reappraisal. She was hired before the reappraisal started, and it wasn't as a result of our reappraisal coming on. She was, she's been here for a while, so um, there was a need identified when Dan was town administrator. They created the position with a job description, and uh, she applied and was filled, filled the position and has been there since. But she's become a very important part of what goes on in the front office. Okay, is there any more comment? Or do we have anything else for this budget to discuss? I, I have nothing more for you to consider. Okay. I'll bring this back uh, for discussion at your next meeting, and then uh, you can make a motion at that point, whatever the motion may read as. Okay. And, uh, and deliberate and, and decide on how your budget, final budget looks. Okay. I have just a. Um a sort of unrelated question. What page are the appropriations on in this one? Where, what section is it? They're not in this one. They're, they're not, not oh, 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 they're not. I mean, you'll see them listed on your overview, and I believe it's 101,000. The total is 100,000. Yeah, it's like 101,000 something. If you go to the overview. Jess, I can get you a copy of last year's town, uh, yeah. town report. Yeah, it's right okay. in the town report. It's $101,969 okay. is what the service agencies were okay. last year. It's okay. helpful to see that, though. Yeah. It'd be good to have a... Yeah. And then, um, and where um, I see, where are the noise house and the library in those? They're, they're part of our budget. They're not, they're not under appropriation okay. for that. Uh, the Louisa. library is in the general fund budget. Um, the noise house, are you referring to the half cent on the tax list? Yeah. That is its own article, so it won't be in our operating budget. It's in the warning. Okay. But it's, in, it's right there. It's on the first page. Right, okay, I see that. And then and the library is in the... It's in the general. In general. Okay. On what page? Towards the back. Um, yeah. Let's see. I believe it's on page 11. Okay, thank you. You'll see that where it says appropriations budgeted. Okay. That's where that is. Okay, thanks. Yeah, one more. One more. <laughs> when can we expect an answer from the select board whether they are willing uh, to uh, take on the item, adding the item of uh, doing the budget on the ballot and line itemizing the appropriations on the uh, that's so it's know, two we things. We just we are under the impression that you guys can do it. So we are kind of looking to you. Will you do it? And if not, do we need to do it? I well, thought I thought you mentioned that appropriations we can't do anything about until we we change to become a charter. No, the only thing you can do it. Um, you have to become a charter to make limits and lots of other things. The only thing you can do at this point. Is line item it on the ballot? Hmm. I'm not. The only I'm not in favor of that, personally. I, I want to talk to Sarah because I'm oh. not just going to go by hearsay or. Well, I want to Sarah talk to her personally. Too, yeah, that's right. what I'm asking. Yeah. Is I know you need to do your research. Yeah. We're just dependent on yeah, the, just, a formal decision from the board that you will, are not willing right. to do it, so that we, as the public, can organize. Right, we can figure it out and talk next meeting. Okay. Put on next meeting. So I can bring on the agenda. I have written down for the next agenda okay. to discuss. No. Okay. So yeah. it'll be on the next, the next agenda. Yeah. Next, yeah. next agenda. No, we, we're going to talk about it during the next agenda. During the next next meeting. meeting. Yeah. Perfect. We'll give us enough time. We're running out of time. Oh, for for um, signatures. Yeah. What, I don't know what the deadlines are. Just. January 30th. January 30th is the day that the select board will get together to approve the articles for town meeting. That Once that's done, it, it, it's done. January 30th. That's also the date the petitions to run for office are due. You know, immediately thereafter, everything has to print. Yeah. It'll, be a short, it'll be a short timeline from the next meeting if they, if they decided not to support that for you to get the signature you'd need to make it an article. So you should, yeah. 
All right. Next, is there any old business on here? No. Next, approve warrants. Make a motion of approval. I have a motion by Brian. Is a second? Second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> the warrants are approved. Key report, Eric. I uh, will start off by saying that if I don't speak to Stuart May as being the third appropriation request that's being uh, get signatures gathered for for the uh, community center on Union Street. Uh, I, I, Judy has told me that they are in the process of get, uh, getting the signatures they need to be on the appropriations list as well. Uh, and nothing I have for you this morning. I attended the legislative breakfast over at Green Mountain Tech Center. Uh, very informative forum. It's hosted by uh, Moyle Economic Development Count, a corporation. Uh, we had many of the representatives there, not all, but uh, it was a good conversation, a good uh, means to hear different questions coming in. Uh, I'm going to continue to attend those. I think there's some important information that comes out there that we might not otherwise have access to. Eric, you said the community center is getting names? Yeah, I believe so. I, well, they, they got $15,000 that you guys transferred from B equals MC Square. And I, they just made that change this last year, so I've said they were going to need to get the, the signatures. They were going to need to get an article get on an article this year because they're under a new name it's new management oh, new okay. name you new so management I, new owner I, I, I kind of i mean I'm, rather than brace them into just staying on there under a new name it's a new entity so i said oh, okay. because you're a new entity you need to go through the process of gathering signatures okay getting the petition i didn't signed. understand that last year my understanding was that they you were transferring over and they they had okay. so they they had just the mobile health partners had just started the process of assuming okay. control of that process they formalized it this year so yeah the other signatures so did they get fifteen thousand dollars in october of so, this um, year the voters voted for the fifteen thousand yes no for emc square they did yes and they got it so they, they got, got that yeah yes, 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 yes you did a one-time transfer correct okay correct. anything else no sir that's it all right select board concerns don so I'll just start by saying I was at that breakfast with the legislators this morning as well. And uh, thanks to our town administrator for speaking up with those legislators and letting them know that we don't need any more legislation from Montpelier telling us what to do and costing us money in years like this when we have budgets as high as we do. I was polite. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. He had a really nice note card to work with. Um, he used his plate as a note card. <laughs> I, I've already spoken to, to this. I'll just mention again, the thefts in downtown Morrisville, uh, whether it's an increase or whether people are just finally talking about it, we don't really know, but obviously it's a concern. I want to just quickly say after the last storm, Morrisville Water and Light got a lot of very deserved uh, appreciation for all their work. I just want to throw out Vermont Electric Co-op as well for their efforts. Some of us were out of power for a lot longer because of the rural nature of where we are. And uh, thank you to more faces in the audience tonight uh, to talk about the budget. And if you can continue to talk it up with other townspeople, that would be great. This is such a big topic. And as Tom has alluded to, and as we've talked about, we need to get the word out. We need people to, to hear what's going on with this budget. That's it. Thanks, Don. Judy. Also, kudos to Water and Light and to the town. I wasn't out driving around on the 23rd, but I'm assuming you guys were busy that day. Thank you. Jess. Um, I, I will reflect the same kudos. Thank you for um, getting our streets all cleaned up and power lines um, back working. And um, thanks for all you do, all the crazy hours you all do, um, especially around the holidays. Um, that's all I have. Right. Again, I have thanks for the power and the roads and the staff for working on this hard budget. Thank you. We appreciate it. We're not. Thank you. No, I know you do. Thank you for saying so. Yes. We all, we all work very hard on this. I know this. you do. The town, all of our crews are doing wonderful jobs. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brian. And I, I'll echo the same thing, thanking the I don't know who it was, if it was Kevin's crew and you guys or somebody, 
but a tree fell across my my driveway right into the road and somebody had it all cut up. I was at work and I came home and my wife was like, there was a tree in the road and now it's gone. And it was all bucked right up really nicely. So I assumed it was either Santa Claus or the highway department because it wasn't near any power lines. But You'll be getting the bill. Yeah, so either Santa's a really not, Santa's not real. nice neighbor or somebody, but thank you for doing that because uh, she didn't have to work that day, but she wasn't going to drive a Mercedes over the top of that tree, I think. So, thank you for doing that. <laughs> That's all I have. Bob, if I can just throw in one uh, caveat in here. I spent some time with Scott Johnstone today for Marshall Water and Light, their manager up there. He couldn't say enough good about uh, our highway department and the relationship that the town and the village currently have and uh, his wish to maintain that um, you know they called out for extra manpower there was no mutual aid available for for electric utilities during that weekend storm because everybody was using everybody and uh, they reached out to us four of our personnel went up there to assist them with chainsaws uh, and help cut away some of the debris and whatnot and then a couple of them hung in longer and did some traffic control on stagecoach road so that they could complete the repairs up there he said it greatly reduced the power outage time uh, because without them cutting the trees that they did, they wouldn't have gotten the power back on as quickly as they did. So he, he wanted to pass along his gratitude. Awesome. Great to hear. <clears throat> All right. Is there any other business? Community concerns. Come on up, Tom. I know you want them. I have one, just one. Uh, my concern is getting the people <clears throat> in the town involved. Uh, I'm concerned about the fact that the on the number of people that show up. This, what we can do for this, this coming town meeting day, is to mail out ballots. And the difference is, without mail out ballots, all the way back to, uh, to 2016, less than 10% of the town had voted on anything. With mail out ballots, we started doing that uh, in 2020. We had the first time 35% of the town, from 10 to 35%. The other time we did it happened in, uh, in December of 2021, 47% of the town voted, up from the 10% and all. And in 2022, 35% voted. And I find these were ballots that were mailed out. Now we know that. Sarah said it's three thousand dollars. I know it's tough for money, but three thousand dollars to get twenty percent, thirty percent of the people involved in voting on them. this year. We'll be voting on the arrivals and uh, and the select board. I think that's something that we can we can we can spend. I think Sarah had mentioned that. The only things that would be on the ballot would be select board and the articles. No, no, no. Though it did, the, yeah, some of the articles, but would the budget wouldn't be on there? No, 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 not for the budget, but the select no. board, the vote of the select board, no. yeah, and the articles. That's all that would be on this time. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we're still talking thirty-five percent. The, the select board should not be elected by ten percent of the votes. Not when you have the option to get at least 35. That's the low percentage yeah. of the votes up to 45. 61 percent at the last general election. 61 percent of the votes. You have an opportunity to read mm -hmm. three thousand well, dollars. What's the reason why the budget can't be on there? Has to wait another year. Right? You have to. I think you'd have to talk to Tell Sarah about that. First. It just. I don't understand. I don't know why I can't give you that answer, but it, it can't. It's not on the. We didn't. A couple weeks ago, we had, we all allocated money for a sign. The sign that comes into town in Morrisville. I bet you that costs three thousand dollars. I think we can get come up three thousand dollars in some kind of fund to pay for us. I think we have to get permission from the state of Vermont to do that. Okay. To put the budget on. Well, We're asking longer. Uh, I don't think so. No. I, I, I believe there is a process that they're speaking to that Sarah's discussed before. I don't want to speak to it because Sarah is the in-house expert and I don't want to get something wrong. I guarantee it. But 
there may be there may be the Except ability the if there's a an article on in during town meeting that is voted upon that the voters pass to a change the way we vote on our budget I, I believe there is a way to do it, but I'm not. Even, I can't speak to the mechanics of it. That's that's the same. Are we talking? We're talking about two separate things. Wait, are we? So some of us are talking about putting the budget on the ballot, and some of us are talking about mailing budgets. What were you asking mailing about, Brian? Mailing it's mailing them out because the mailing of the budget out is not. You wait, not, no, no, have, I'm not talking about the budget. The budget can't be changed this voting this this year, right? At all. When I'm talking about mail out ballots, okay. that are there's going to be an Australian. Uh, ballot this this, this meeting, mm -hmm. this town meeting, coming up on that Australian ballot is going to be uh, you, I assume, and, and you, Jessica, and the other <coughs> people who, who, who goes along. Mm -hmm. Now, that you in the past, that had to come to here wherever you, you uh, vote to do that. You've only got 10%. That's the largest number, is 10%. Mailing them out, you're going to get over 35 percent. That's and the budget is the budget is going to be done next town meeting. That's what you're saying. Okay. It's just next year if we do it. Involved. Next year if we do it, what you're talking, trying to get done, then it all will be on there. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. On the ballot, right? No, you can't do that. The only thing that the Australian ballot is every year the town meeting they have an Australian ballot vote. Well, Town select board members and the articles that you, you as the board, uh, say. I don't know what's going to be on there. Last I think year. we have the budget on there. We'll no, we no there none of the budget. budget. The budget no. is not me. So the budget is not on Australian ballots. <coughs> I thought when we had COVID because we didn't have a town meeting. Well, that might have been an exception because of COVID, okay. but I, I don't That's know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I know it has. Yeah. Yes, there's nothing to do about that anyway. I mean, so. This year, the budget is going to be separate at town meeting to vote it. There also is going to be the select board member voting and the articles that whatever is usually two or three articles, Australian voters. I'm saying that mail them out, that Australian vote. $3,000 according to Sarah. And you're also saying you're proposing that in future we that that you would put a petition together potentially for in the future to put the budget on a, a ballot. That's what we're going to write a petition for. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, that and that, but that can't happen until 2024. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If the smart board decides not to do it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Which, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Changes. Any other community concerns? Yes. Okay. Uh, one more. Where does this come from? You guys have already had a lot of concerns today. <laughs> I'm really giving you a lot of leeway, all of, both of you. The, uh, I watched the December 7th uh, video, and I think we all need to be aware that anything that is filmed lives forever on the internet. Um, I personally was highly offended uh, about the discussion of Todd's salary. Uh, and referencing his wife, who is a highly intelligent, well-educated, and referring to her as a sugar mama. Mm -hmm. that, that's not acceptable. I had, a, I had a conversation with her about that. Yeah. Well, I'm offended. Um, it's living on the internet forever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anybody's, in this case, this was a private conversation uh, back, but I just want to think we all need to be respectful of each other, that we're all professionals. Um, and just be careful about our language because it's, it's a you. bad reflection on the town of Morrisville. And I'm trying to be better myself. Oh, yeah, it shows. <laughs> Is there any more community concerns? I think yeah. this, Can I speak? Kathy Chat. Yes. Kathy. Um, so, uh, to all of you on the select board, um, when Laura said to you that. Um, I, I, I think she said she, we depend on you to get this, um, everything on Australian ballot. And I don't agree with her on that. I know you're all busy. Something can come up between now and next year and th that never gets done. It would be probably easier if you could do it. But Laura and Tom, I think the taxpayers are us 
need to take responsibility of this if we want it done. And also, we, if we have to, I would have to look into it, but we might be able to petition that every vote is mailed and that is voted on by the taxpayers. Tom, you can sit there and talk all you want, but we have to do it. And I'm pretty sure we could put a petition that every vote, every time there's a vote out, that it would have to be mailed. Um, and us taxpayers, would they would be built into the budget. Um, so I'm hoping that I'll take something off your plate as a select board and we can do this as uh, taxpayers. But I just wanted to say I didn't agree with her on that at all. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Any other community concerns? <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Any other business? <laughs> Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Don and second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now adjourned. Open it back, Kathy.